Hi everyone, welcome to the hands-on walkthrough of this GIS software tutorial about cartographic design and map making with ArcGIS Pro. Before we get into the specific steps, I wanted to show you what the end result of the tutorial will be. Here you can see a reference map I've created basically all from scratch using ArcGIS Pro. I'll show you how to create this background layer that you might call it the ground of figure ground relationships stylizing the roads, putting the labels, constructing a detail map that uses some cartographic generalization, as well as a basic layout. I don't claim for this to be an award-winning cartographic design, but if you're able to master all the skills, concepts, and tool operation in ArcGIS Pro to make a map like this, you'll be well on your way to becoming a more advanced cartographer. So let's start with task one, step one. And the first thing that you should do is create a new ArcGIS Pro project, and I'm going to use the map template. And I'll just call it cart um, for cartography. And of course, the very first thing you'll see in ArcGIS Pro when you open the software with a map template is a basic map. So the very first thing we're going to do now is rename the map. We're going to first create an overview map. And to do that, I'll right click, go to properties and call this overview. Now, another important thing to do is set the reference scale of the map. And what that means is when you're creating a two dimensional map, like the example I showed you in the beginning, you're going to want to set the reference scale so that any symbols that are drawn will look the way they do at that scale. And this will make more sense as we start adding things like labels and other text elements and all those labels and text elements will be rendered so that they look good at the reference scale. So to set the maps reference scale, if you look at the tutorial steps, we're going to make the reference scale one to 20,000. So to do that, first go down here to the bottom left. What I like to do is select one to 24,000. I'll make it one to 20,000. And then I'm going to go back over to the map itself, right click and do set reference scale. And so as you can see at one to 20,000, as we start to add our own elements, this is how things will look in the printed map. Now for task one, step two, define a study area. This overall exercise is gonna be driven by using a USGIS one to 24,000 scale quad map boundary. So for viewers from the United States who might be looking at uh, this example, I live in upstate New York. So what I'm going to do is use this map Hamburg as my example. This is actually where I'm from originally. So you determine which quad you want to use. I'm going to use Hamburg. So if you want to follow along, that's fine. So now for task one, step three, I want you to download a digital elevation model of this area. And you can do that in the tutorial URL from this website, the Cornell University Geospatial Information Repository known as Cougar. And what you should do, find your quad map here and go ahead and download the DEM. And I've already done that. So what I'm going to do is go back over to my project and go to my project folder. It's right here. I'm going to drag that and put that into my table of contents. And I'm going to right click and rename it from its default name to DEM. Now for task one, step four, we're going to use the DEM to basically 
modifying the map so only the DEM is what's being shown in the map and anything within the extent of that DEM is shown on the map. So for example, even with the base map, you can see how the DEM is showing other areas around it. So to make the DEM the main thing that's going to basically clip out everything else, we're going to go to the map, right click, properties, then we're going to select clip layers, and then we're going to select clip to a custom extent, extent of a layer DEM. And after I do that, watch what will happen to the map behind it here. So notice now how nothing else is showing. I mean, there's a little overlap, but if I turn off the DEM layer, you can see now that everything in the map is basically only sh being shown based on the extent of the DEM. And in just a moment, we're going to add some vector GIS data sets, and you'll see how that clipping affects the display of everything. And really, it's a handy technique for reducing basically amount of visual clutter on your map, especially for this tutorial where we're really focused on creating a reference map for a very specific area. Now for task one, step five, we're gonna add some vector data sets to, to the map. And I provided some tutorial data sets that I've already put into my project folder. And one of those is a shape file called New York State Roads. So what I'm gonna do is drag that over and put that on top of my DEM. And to give it a little more, just so you can see it better, I'll double click on the default symbol, make it something more visually prominent to start. And so basically, again, these are roads for all of New York State where I live, but because we set the clipping based on the DEM, we're only seeing within the extent of the DEM. Now, a nice thing I like to do sometimes, if I know that I'm going to be making a very focused map for a very specific area, instead of just using the clipped roads, even though they're clipped visually, you still have the entire data set, which is almost 900,000 records for the whole entire New York State. So to make it a little easier to manage, I'm going to export a subset of these roads out to my project file geodatabase. And so to do that, I'm going to right click on the layer, select data, export features. Then I'm gonna go over here to environments and select processing extent, same as layer DEM. So once again, we see how that DEM is really defining our study area. And in this case, we're gonna use it to basically clip out and export a subset of roads from the overall shapefile. And I'm just gonna call this new layer roads, and that was what the little error was I had there. So I go over to my project default file geodatabase, and there's roads in there, and I can remove the tutorial data sets because now I have a physical copy subset of those roads. And if I look at the attribute table for this, it's only about 1600 records as opposed to 900,000 records from the overall data set. Now for task one, step seven, we're going to add some XY point data and the way we're going to do that, these points have been provided to you in the tutorial data sets. So the way this will work, go to the tutorial data sets folder, take the file point features txt, bring that over into your table of contents, right click on the table, it's currently a standalone table, select display xy data. And the way this will work here, you want to select the prime long DEC, and that's basically the longitude decimal degree value as the X field, and the prime lat DEC as the Y field.
and we'll run that. And again, it might be a little hard to see initially. So sometimes it's helpful just to throw a default symbol on. And you can see these red points on my map. Now again, these are point features for all of New York State. If you were to look at the original table they came from, you know, so many you can't even list it, over 200, more than 2,000 records, that's with a little star. So if you're using a map other than Hamburg, you have all of New York to look at as per what I talked about in task one, step two. Now, similar to the roads, we're gonna export these point features out so we have a nice clean subset of data focused on our map of this Hamburg study area. So similar process. I'm gonna to go to the point data, right click, data export features and I'll go again to environment the processing extent will be the same as layer DEM I'm going to put it in my project default geo database and I'm going to call it points of interest And I'll run that. I'll remove the original XY point data out of my map. I'll even get rid of the standalone table. And I really recommend if you're new to GIS, try to keep things as clean as possible as once you start getting a lot of layers, it gets kind of messy. And of course, save your work. And so at this point, we now have our project set up. We've import, imported and created three data sets that will be the basis for creating our final map product. And I'll now show you how to do that under task two, data symbolization. Hi, this is Brian Tomaszewski. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and share this video. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel and clicking the notification icon to stay up to date on new videos from this channel. Thanks for watching.